We're recapping the semester in style as we close out the year. Each reporter picked their favorite story to showcase for you. With moments from all over the Baylor community, you won't want to miss a thing. Welcome to the Larry TV News Best of Show. Welcome back to the final installment of Lariat TV News this school year. I'm Nate Smith. It's not a normal show, but it's a good one. That's right. I'm Sigrid Massey, and today we are bringing you LTVN's best of show. We'll be highlighting stories from throughout this semester and all over campus. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a recap of our favorite moments. A story that started with a viral video ended up being one of the most watched LTVN stories of all time. Back at the beginning of April, I talked with the Waco Police Department to find out more about how social media put a criminal behind bars. True crime stories are all over social media, but one local YouTuber might have helped police put a criminal behind bars themselves. Last Friday, Waco PD announced they had arrested known sex offender Brian May after a YouTube video circulating around the community showed the video creator catfishing May into thinking he would be meeting up with a 14-year-old girl. Waco PD says they are looking for the video creator to try to collect evidence that could be used in court. And so... Once our officers found that video, we were able to look at him and see that he was already a registered sex offender. Um, it was found that he wasn't keeping up with that registration, and so that's how we were able to make that arrest. This arrest is the latest in a string of stalking and predatory arrests in Waco. On Monday, Baylor sent out an email with tips from BUPD about how to protect yourself, which includes staying alert and aware of your surroundings, report any suspicious activity you might see, and travel in well-lit areas. Meet in a populated area. Meet at a normal time of the day. Uh, when you know people are going to be around, if something does happen, you can get help really quickly from someone just walking by. Um, to meet at a weird time of day, at a more maybe isolated location, probably isn't going to be the best because you don't know that person that you're talking to on the other side of the screen. So they could end up being uh, anyone and it could turn into a really dangerous situation. If you see suspicious activity or want to report a crime yourself, contact BUPD at 254-710-2222, Waco PD at 254-750-7500, or call 911 in case of an emergency. For Larry at TV News, I'm Sigrid Massey. Breaking news at Baylor doesn't happen often, but this semester I had the opportunity to investigate a rumor spreading around campus and eventually found the answer. This was by far my favorite story because of the research process throughout the production of the story and the impact that it had on student safety. One concerned mother's Facebook post, which generated discussion all over campus and social media on Sunday, and even prompted a response from the Waco PD, has turned out to be a false alarm. The Baylor student mentioned in the post interviewed with the Lariat, but requested to remain anonymous. She said she was in her apartment at Ursa and answered the door to three strangers who invited her to a Bible study. They mentioned the belief in God the Mother, she said no, closed and bolted the door, and proceeded to research this church alongside her parents who called the police and shared the situation online. However, Joseph Scaramucci, a human trafficking detective at McLennan County Sheriff's Office, said it was not a sex trafficking scheme. It's completely false. It's a hoax. Um, that has made the rounds for the last several years and has been proven time and time again to be a hoax. Sierra Shipley, the public information officer at Waco PD, spoke with officers on site and confirmed Scaramucci's statement. So our officers don't believe that any sex trafficking was going on or anything like that. And also, when I did some more research on the God, the mother, it sounds like it was a kind of a hoax, a social media hoax, blew up pretty quickly online. While this was not an incident of sex trafficking, Scaramucci said it is still a very real issue that all students should be conscious of. Um, I would just say that one of the biggest things is make sure you know who your friends are, who you're talking to, um, and who you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis because those are the people that are more likely to traffic you than somebody knocking on a door wanting to talk about God. 
If you find yourself in a similar situation to what this Baylor student experienced, always call Baylor PD, Waco PD, or in the event of an emergency, call 911. Just like this student did, I mean, always, you know, if you see something suspicious, hear something suspicious, please report it to us because at least that it is, as long as it's brought to our attention, we can now be on the lookout for it. For Lariat TV News, I'm Danica Young. I chose this story because meeting both Katie Holly and her mother was such an inspiration to me. I loved talking to the two of them and learning more about their life. She came into my room late one night and she's like, is God mad at me? Did I do something wrong? Is this a punishment? And that just broke this mom's heart. Senior Katie Holly has been battling with neuroblastoma cancer for over 13 years. She has undergone about a dozen surgeries, 35 chemotherapies, 30 radiation treatments, and 40 scans. The kind of cancer Katie has is prone to relapse, and she has relapsed six times, with three of those occurring her sophomore, junior, and now senior year of college. I was in pain all last semester with like my shoulder and arm and I just thought it was a pinched nerve and so I wasn't able to walk to class all last semester I had to take the bus from U Point um, because I tried walking to class and I just like bawled my eyes out in the bathroom because I was in so much pain and then had to pull it together and go to class. After a rough start to senior year, two days into her spring semester, Katie took herself to the ER and discovered that she had developed a benign schwannoma tumor in her spine. Because of its position in the spine, the tumor is in a rather difficult place that has left many of Katie's doctors wondering what to do until now. So we've heard from four or five people that it was impossible. You're just going to have to live with your pain. But yesterday we walked in and this team came in and said, we're going to tackle it and we're going to see if we can take it out. So she just broke down into tears thinking I don't have to live in excruciating pain. Currently on 20 pills a day for pain regulation, Katie was unable to participate in all university sing with her sorority, Tri-Delta. However, Katie continues to volunteer in her community and remains a full-time student through Baylor with the help of faculty and staff. If I wasn't at Baylor, I'd be a college dropout. Absolutely. Baylor is literally the most generous and has so much mercy on me and are so accommodating for every situation I'm in. Katie plans to walk the stage this spring as she closes her final semester at Baylor. If you would like to read more about Katie's journey, you can pre-order The Climb by Mary Kay Hawley. And all proceeds will go to three local charities and help fund medical expenses. For Lariat TV News, I'm Caitlin Kempf. Many events have made a comeback since COVID, and FM72 is one that has stuck around and worked through those changes. I had the opportunity to sit down with the creator of FM72 and learn how they got their start, and it's one of my favorite stories from the spring semester. What started out four years ago at a small breakfast table has turned into a campus-wide event that is changing thousands of lives. I think that's the ethos behind FM72, is that we're not there with this pressure on us to to, to succeed in creating something. We're there to celebrate. In 2019, Charles Ramsey, associate chaplain at Baylor, met with pastors from Harris Creek and First Baptist Waco and sparked an idea, what if we brought all of the churches in Waco together to make something bigger? Pastors from around the area heard the plan and started to join in, and FM72 began to grow. We began with no agenda. There was no like, hey, let's change the world or let's do this. It was really, how are you doing? A prayer tent opened Sunday in Fountain Mall, and the 72 hours began. Wednesday night, the 72 hours came to an end, concluding the round-the-clock prayer and four nights of worship. But FM 72 isn't just prayer and worship. On Tuesday night, students were baptized on Fountain Mall. The group had never planned on providing baptisms after worship until last year. There was one student from Highland who uh, approached his college minister and said, man, I want to get baptized. And, and Drew said, great, man, I'm, uh, you know, let's get you ready and we'll do, you, uh, do it on church on Sunday. He says, I love FM72. Can I do it at FM72? Those students will come back to Fountain Mall 20 years from now with their families and their kids and say, I followed Jesus when I was in college. It was the best decision I ever made. And I got baptized right here. Over the last three days, more than 2,000 students have had their life changed through this program. 
and FM72 hopes its impact will continue until they come back next year. For Laria TV News, I'm Caitlin Sides. Every outlet loves an exclusive story, and LTVN is no exception. I was able to get Baylor Athletic Director Mac Rhodes for a one-on-one -on -one interview after his 10-year contract extension earlier this year. It was a fun interview, an even better story. Take a look. He's never been at any university for longer than five years, but now he's adding a decade to his current five-and-a-half-year stay at Baylor. Athletic Director Mac Rhodes says there's still work to be done, and his priority is maintaining a unique Baylor identity and uplifting student-athletes. Our success isn't because we've tried to be like everybody else, and in particular, a, a lot of the institutions with, within our state, but we've we found our place, we, we know our our purpose, um, but, but staying true to that. Rhodes said there's always improvement to be made in academic and athletic success, but character formation, spiritual growth, and caring for the mental health of student athletes is critical. How do we navigate that space better? Um, we, we have to. We're not going to talk about it and, and not do it. We're going to do the, the very, very best we can to, to, to live that out. Rhodes arrived amid a turbulent time for the university in 2016 in the wake of an investigation that found allegations of sexual assault had been mishandled. After former football head coach Art Bryles was fired, Rhodes hired Matt Rule and then current head coach Dave Aranda. Both would bring massive success to the program. So can fans expect more high quality picks in the future? Rhodes says he hopes the situation doesn't come up, but if it does, fans have nothing to worry about. But if for for some reason, somebody decides that, hey, um, there's another opportunity that that's God, God's calling, calling us to, then, um, yeah, I, I feel confident that uh, we'll be able to, to hire that, that next great, great coach. With confidence in his coaches, new facilities being built, and a changing NCAA landscape, Rhodes has a lot of room to develop the department over the next 10 years. And he says the best is yet to come. I believe this and I say this, you know, um, with with all my heart and, and I, I hopefully it comes across with with humility. Um, but our our best days are are still ahead of us. For Larry at TV News, I'm George Schroeder. Up next, we're bringing you some of our favorite sports stories from this semester. We cover a lot of news, but some of the most fun our reporters have is on the field, in the press box or taking in game day. Don't miss these great moments next. Let there be light. Let there be roommates and teammates and strangers who become family. Let there be marching and cheering. Let there be challenging courses and time to share. Scholarship and championships. Let there be groundbreaking and soul searching. Let there be laughter. Let there be joy. Let there be light. When College Game Day makes it to Baylor, it is truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience for anyone that gets to attend. But to get the best spot in line for the big event, students had to camp out inside the Ferrell Center, and I covered what that was like. College Game Day was back in the Ferrell Center for the first time in over two years, and countless students wanted in on a once-in-a-lifetime experience. To guarantee a spot for the men's basketball game and for game day, some people wasted no time lining up for when the doors finally opened at 9 p.m. This I afternoon. I got here at 4.45. 4.45? And have you been sitting here since then? Yes, I have. What did you bring in preparation for staying the night? Uh, my backpack, and I had someone bring a couple blankets for me. Okay, uh, so you just came with your backpack, just and that's came it? came straight from the science building. To pass the time through the night comfortably, students got creative on their temporary living situations. People brought blankets, sleeping bags, air mattresses, and even hammocks, and it showed off what college life is really about. Yeah, so uh, if you can see on the film, we got a hammock set up on the handles of the door here. Um, it's got just enough height where I can lay on it comfortably uh, if you want and turn it into a bench as well. Share it with some friends. Below us, we got a lot of sleeping pads in this nice little corner. We got the heat coming down on us. Um, so it's a nice little setup for the boys. Even though it was one of the only ways to secure a ticket for the Baylor and Kansas men's basketball game, the students who attended were rewarded with guest appearances from basketball coaches Nikki Collins and Scott Drew. Many people prepared for as if they were being there for days by the amount of items they brought. The students found other unique ways of passing the time and were able to watch a movie screening in the Ferrell Center. The Baylor faithful ended up getting the opportunity to witness an 80 to 70 victory that afternoon, capping off a great 24 hours for the entire Baylor community to remember. With Blair 8 TV News, I'm Pearson Lussie. 
I enjoyed telling the story of former volleyball player Campbell Bowden because her happiness is so contagious and she reminds us that you can rejoice even in the hard times of life. So they told me that in order to keep myself healthy for like the rest of my life and to keep my heart healthy that I needed to, to step away from any strenuous activities. Um, and so volleyball, playing collegiate volleyball is very strenuous. So uh, May of 2021 is when I decided that I need to step away. It was a tough decision in May 2021, but Mayo Clinic doctors were thinking long term. Campbell Bowden had contracted Lyme disease, probably on a team retreat in Texas. And I actually got baptized in this like swamp water um, and I had to like go through like a grass, like a tall grass area to get to it. And so they think that's where I got bit because I started showing symptoms like shortly after. Um, so it's kind of ironic that I got baptized, but also got Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease is transmitted to humans through a tick bite and has flu-like symptoms or worse. The disease can be treated with antibiotics or in a rare case like Campbell's can last over the course of years. And so it was really tough about the month after just because I didn't know what to do. I felt lost. I was angry. Um, but it was just so cool to see like the community around me and my, my peers and my friends and family to just like remind me that volleyball was just something I did and not who I was. Now Campbell has turned her attention to a new journey she's excited about. She started writing a blog and is doing a podcast about her struggles called I Say Rejoice. So I wanted to express like how I was struggling and my story to others in case there was one person out there who felt like they couldn't really talk about their struggles. You can truly rejoice in the sufferings and rejoicing doesn't always have to mean that you're like in a happy time of your life. Uh, but when you're truly rejoicing, it is like the neatest experience. You can listen to I Say Rejoice via Spotify and Apple Podcast. For Larry at TV News, I'm Alexandra Lawrence. With the 79th pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the LA Chargers drafted former Baylor safety JT Woods. Back in March, I talked to JT about the NFL Draft process and his time as a Baylor Bear. I had so much fun working on this story. It was actually JT's girlfriend, LTVN's Brian Garcia, who got me in contact with him. I look forward to interviewing more Baylor football players next season in NFL Draft hopefuls. Go Chargers! Since the final whistle blew in New Orleans on New Year's Day, seven Baylor players were invited to the NFL scouting combine, including safety JT Woods. Of its education as well. Um, my thought process was never like I'm playing football to go to the NFL. It was always I'm playing football to get a free education, and it kind of just grew into you know, me having the ability and the option to go to that path. But um, my main focus was always on education and just being able to get all that I could uh, out of Baylor University. During his time at Baylor, JT saw it all, including Matt Rule's final two years and Dave Aranda's rough first season. And of course, this season, which ended in a Big 12 championship and a Sugar Bowl victory. After the season, four Baylor players were invited to the Reese's Senior Bowl including JT. It was just a lot of fun, me being able to play with, you know, some of the guys that I right. played with at Baylor as well. Just having that extra college game with those guys was just amazing. Um, and then the fact that I got to be with, you know, some of the best collegiate athletes in the country and just kind of be on the same team as them was really, really fun. I had a really good week there. Since the Senior Bowl, JT has been in Phoenix training with other NFL draft hopefuls in preparation for the combine. Um, so it's been really, really fun with all those guys, guys all across the country. Um, that are all in the draft pool as well. So it's, it's going to be really fun come April to see uh, all the people that I've been working out with, you know, where they go. And then even coming up this next week, all the people that I've been working out, how they do in the combine. Make sure to tune in on Sunday and watch JT run the NFL combine's biggest event, the 40-yard dash. You guys got to say right now what you're going to run on Sunday. I just got to wait and see next week. <laughs> yeah, you got to wait and see next week. It's a big mystery for everybody. Yeah. Hey. For Larry at TV News, I'm Braden Murray. This spring, we saw several Bears get drafted to the pros. And last month, I had the opportunity to join some of the women's basketball team at their draft party, where they watched three of their teammates selected to the WNBA. It was both a fun and unique package, making it my favorite story of the semester. The Baylor women's basketball team had a WNBA draft watch party at assistant coach Tony Green's house on Monday night, hoping to see three of their former teammates chosen to play at the next level. I think it's really exciting. I think the hard work is paying off for them. I think 
uh, especially being with Queen and Liz for the fa past four years, uh, is amazing to finally get to see them reach their goals and, and get to move on and move forward. Leading up to the draft, there was growing speculation regarding who the Atlanta Dream would take with the number one pick. With the first pick in the 2022 WNBA draft, the Atlanta Dream select Ryan Howard from the University of Kentucky. After Ryan Howard was selected at number one, the Indiana Fever followed with the second overall pick in the draft. With the second pick in the 2022 WNBA draft, the Indiana Fever select Nalissa Smith, Baylor University. The Fever had the numbers two, four, six, and ten picks in the first round. And with their final selection of the round, Indiana's front office decided to bring in the second piece of Baylor's dynamic duo. With the 10th pick in the 2022 WNBA draft, the Indiana Fever select Queen Egbo. Jordan Lewis went to the Connecticut Sun as the 24th overall pick, the final Baylor selection. Now, the trio joins seven other former Bears, such as Brittany Griner and Dee Dee Richards in the league. Fans can cheer on this year's picks when the 2022 WNBA season kicks off on May 6th. For Larry at TV News, I'm Joe Pratt. If there's one thing I love more than covering the games themselves, it's getting to participate in the pregame festivities with the Baylor family. Spending my New Year's weekend with my fellow Bears in New Orleans was an experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. Here's a peek into how the Bears took over the streets of the Big Easy. After nearly a month off for Baylor, the Sugar Bowl is finally here. And despite all the pageantry that comes with playing in a New Year's Six Bowl, the key for the Bears may just to be to stick to the status quo. It's just very important for us to be us and for us to not, you know, get out of our lane of what we do well. And so I think, you know, uh, offensively for us uh, to move the ball and run the ball, establish line of scrimmage. For Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin, it's that hard-nosed, smart brand of football that makes Dave Aranda's squad so dangerous. I think how physical they play, disciplined, you know, they're so well coached. You, know, you just don't see many big plays against them or screw-ups, you know, which makes it, makes it hard to beat. It's clear that the coaches and their teams are already locked in for Saturday's game. And it seems that the fans are rocking and ready to go as well. Sugar Bowl weekend is chocked full of pomp and circumstance, including a parade through the French Quarter and a pep rally for the Baylor faithful. And judging by their pregame predictions, the Baylor spirit in the air must just have the fans feeling dangerous. Um, I think the Baylor running game is just going to be too much for Ole Miss, and I think we're going to come out with a 35-28 win. I think Baylor's going to win by three. I have faith in Coach Aranda. Listen, I think Ole Miss is a great team, but I think Aranda's boys are going to take it. And they're going to take it to them both on defense and offense and even special teams. I'm looking forward to this game. It's going to be awesome. Sick of Bears. For Larry at TV News in New Orleans, I'm Nate Smith. And with that, we're wrapping up our special showcase. We hope you've enjoyed keeping up with all the latest news this year. And don't worry, we'll be back to keep you informed again this fall. Before you go, we want to thank you for watching Lariat TV News. Stick with us for all the latest on-campus news and more great moments like these. Study hard, have a great summer, and for one final time, sick'em bears.